I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're talking to a terrific author. Her name is Rowena Banks, and she has written a gripping survival story. It is called Surviving the Sierras. It is told through the eyes of 12-year-old Jessica, and this tale of three sisters braving the wilderness after a plane crash will keep you on the edge of your seat. Facing snowstorms, predators, and the threat of starvation, these sisters never lose hope. You will love this story. You'll wonder if it's real. It feels real, that's for sure. We'd like to thank this wonderful author for joining us here today. We thank the team at Bookside Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing work. The links are below this interview. Rowena, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. It's so great to be here. Wonderful to have you on the show. As I said to you before we started rolling and in your introduction, this feels like a real story. Is it loosely based on a real story of something that really happened to somebody? Or tell me ab about the inspiration behind Surviving the Sierras. Well, I I wrote the story when um, I would take my children to, they were on the Squaw Valley ski team um, back in the day. And so um, I was used to a very, very crazy schedule and I wasn't used to any idle time. So while I was waiting for them, I started writing. Well, a lot of the times I was just sitting in my car, you know, surrounded by incredible, beautiful mountains, you know, covered in snow. And um, so my imagination just kind of took over and it was very easy to put myself in these situations. Absolutely. And are the characters, Jessica, Crystal, and Sarah, based on your own daughters? They actually are. Yeah. yeah. So their their personalities are are pretty close to, to the girls. Yeah. So that's great. Have now yeah, have you fun. shared this story with them? Have you read it with them or to them? Or tell me about that? Because they must get oh, a yes. out of that. Yeah, they they know the story inside out. They they love the story. I I read it to them as I was writing it. And um you know, the, the sequel as well. So yeah, they're very invested in the story and they see themselves. I actually, um, I pulled out the first three chapters because, um, it was just, it was all about their lives and how they would, we lived out in the country, um, in the Sierras and, um, they had a horse and a goat and, you know, a couple horses, um, uh, but they would take their horse around the block, which was like a three mile block and um, get brushed off and everything. So the first three chapters were very much about their lives. And then, you know, as I learned about writing and, and getting into the hook, I learned that, um, you know, you start immediately with action and something that people want to keep, keep reading about. So um, I, you know, I might pull out those three chapters and insert it somewhere else, you know, just just for keepsake, I guess. But yeah, uh, yeah so it, it's very much about the girls' lives. Well, you did a great job of ratcheting up the uh, tension, the uh, survival aspects, the wanting to turn the page aspects. So you did a really Thank nice you. job. I didn't wasn't aware there was a sequel. Tell us about the sequel. Oh, the sequel is called Not Again. And mm. the girls <laughs> and their mother, they uh, fall off a cruise ship. So, well, the mother jumps in after them. The girls get pushed and uh, the mother jumps in after them. And then they, they survive in a tropical setting. So uh, I went from the Sierras, you know, a mountain, you know, freezing cold weather to more tropical uh, temperatures and, and also, you know, the resources that were available to them. Exactly. You went from the mountains to the sea. And uh, so it's kind of a 180 degree turn, although the survival aspect of it is still there, which is great. Yeah. Have you envisioned Surviving the Sierras as a film? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Because, you know, I'm sure every writer can actually see their entire story in front of them. So, um, you know, I, I see it as as a film easily. Yeah, and there hasn't yeah. been a good airline disaster movie in a long time. I grew up, there was Airport 75 and Airport 79. And every couple of years, there'd be another disaster movie featuring a plane. So I think we're overdue there. Yeah. Yeah, it was a hard, um, it was, I had to kind of tiptoe around making it not too graphic for young readers. Mm -hmm. Um 
you know, so I didn't really, I didn't play up the fact that they were the only survivors. I mean, the kids knew that they were the only survivors, but um, then the story I call the, the, the plane, which they, they all survived from um, as the, uh, I think I called it the storeroom or something like that, you know, so that, you know, the mom would trek back and find, you know, see what she could get out of it. But um, I did try to keep the kids um, away from that envisioning that I want body bags all over the place you no thought. yeah you, you definitely don't want them picturing body bags or even bodies or anything even bodies you know? yeah because the body bags yeah. come later so yeah yeah without a doubt um who's your target audience for the book the it's a juvenile i would say it's a it's a young reader through mm -hmm. adult I mean, yeah. um, I know I read, I read anything like even TV. I, I like PG 13 and up. You know? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it'll, I'm working on getting the, it's a trilogy actually. Um, okay. the third one is, uh, hasn't been published yet. I'm working on editing it, but it's called, um, well, right now it's called Runaway Train. I don't know what I'll call it in the future because I think there's a lot of books called Runaway Train. <laughs> but uh, so um, I'm working on getting the whole set out on paperback um, at one time. Wonderful. So. And Runaway Train or whatever it turns out to be is about the girls on a train that is run away. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And there's, yeah, it's a, it, there's a little twist on this one where there's a bad guy and the girls are, you know, about three years older or so. So, um, you know, there's a little bit difference um, with that. Is there a message that you hope your readers take away from when reading these books about resilience and courage and uh, beating the odds? Well, because I'm a mother of three girls, <laughs> you know, I'm all about strengthening you know their self-esteem and their um their independence and all of that so it's just about really it's about faith and trust and about um believing in your own abilities and never giving up so you know in the first one the first book surviving sierras uh i made sure that the girls walked out they they walked off the mountain by themselves and um and then book two not again uh, they did get rescued because basically there was, um, you know, it was hard for them to walk out of that situation. But the a, a friendship that Jessica had developed um, that enabled them to be able to get rescued. And then um, the the last one, whether it's called uh, Runaway Train or not, I don't know what it's going to be called, but um, that one the girls kind of save there's a there's a bad guy in it and they kind of save the day so again they're empowered <laughs> oh, absolutely i think that's great that the girls walk off the mountain by themselves that they're they have it within themselves to save themselves they don't need to be rescued and yeah. i think that's a, a great message for women and men for people in general that yeah, everything right. they need they have within themselves you know they yeah. have the tools to do this that's great and um tell us about making it real how did you go about adding those elements of realism that it felt like a true story? Well, again, it was through my imagination and living in the mountains. I spent, um, prior to the foothills, when I was writing this, we had spent another four years up in Lake Tahoe on the other side of the lake. And um, and so I have a lot of um, experience living in the mountains and, you know, bears and and mountain lions were out in our area in the foothills. And um, so, you know, in the foothills, my kids never went out without their dog because, you know, I knew she would protect them and she'd be the first, you know, she'd be the sacrifice, I guess. And, um, and uh, so it's just through my life experience that I have um, lived, you know, in the mountain area and what, what it's like to be in the snow, what it's like to be cold and, and, uh, deal with all that and the concern about what if I ever got stranded you know always making sure my car has has those emergency blankets in it and things like that so you know my mind my mind works like that 
how your mind worked the right way when you're putting together this book because it felt very, very real and very, very true and very, very gripping. Uh, the name of the story is Surviving the Sierras. Surviving Sierras, yeah. That's right. It's told through the <laughs> eyes of a 12-year-old, Jessica, in this tale of three sisters braving the wilderness after a plane crash will keep you on the edge of your seat and you'll be looking forward to this being made into a film because it's a great story. And there are two sequels to it, one about a cruise ship, one about a train, each one featuring the adventures of these three courageous sisters. Rowena, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a My pleasure. My pleasure. I enjoyed having you on the show. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.